And welcome in this Star Valor video here. We are going to take a quick look at equipment. Well, it might not be quick, but we're going to try and cover everything that we can about the different pieces of equipment, how to, and what's best to use uh, for your ship building needs. So you have a good understanding of what's going on in this game because all the equipment options there, it can become confusing and all that kind of stuff on your ships there. So uh, other than the basics on here for your equipment value, your, you know, your different ships have different equipment values, that type of thing. Uh, the only way to increase that is to go in the engineering skill and take this 10% piece of equipment or go into your and go into your knowledge and be a space pilot at level 50, getting a plus four to your equipment slots. But you know, and that gets modified too. So that is handy to have too. Uh, so here for your ships right here, you have the different things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need energy production. You're probably gonna want shield or hit point regeneration and you're going to need uh, some inertia nullifiers to be functional well, you don't need them but you kind of want at least one you need some gyroscopes for your turning so the uh, initial null inertia nullifiers in this game affect this so you see me turning right here and my ship is moving with me so i'm slowly moving my ship is moving with the turn that is the inertial uh, inertial nullifiers effect so that is the stabilizing effect uh, there is a cap on it and the bigger ships have a less of an effect and the smaller ones are, are a little bit better so uh, you can get away with having none on smaller ships because their initial value is really low so they have a better stability on there and that's all you need. Uh, strafing in this game is pretty much garbage so we don't need lateral thrusters and this is the turning right here that is the gyroscopes. So the gyroscopes do the turning and the turning is capped in this game. Same with the engines and the acceleration and type, that type of thing. Well it's not really capped but you, you can only get so many things for the engines. You can only use one engine on your ship. Unfortunately there's no stack in them so um, that was be, that would have been something cool they should have done on the bigger ships made to have like you know use two engines because they're so big they could use two engines uh, but uh, that is not implemented so you're stuck using engines that, that are designed for a, like a class three or something like that or class four on a class six type of a ship uh, and that means you don't go anywhere fast and you have like no acceleration at all and there's no way to increase that uh, unless you're using skills and uh, perks and all that kind of stuff uh, that is the best you could do is just lower your mass in this game lower the mass on your ship but uh, let's not get carried away uh, entry production and uh, and everything else uh, in this game there's different factions and different factions have different rewards and in these rewards uh, they have different things like the Myers have a Myers reactor and the Venge have their own Venge large reactor now these are going to be better in the long run to be using they have a higher coefficiency when you level them up and uh, that means when they start off like the basic you know ion on the large ion reactor here is what the basic everybody has this one and is the best you're going to get until you get a faction related one now he has a coefficient of 100 percent that means that uh, when it's white it's going to be half of this value so when you go from white to epic you get 100 percent boost and you can go to legendary if you can get one in a drop type of a deal but the miners one right here it starts off weaker and right now at the epic value it equals the same but it also has built-in energy storage and you're looking at like the 84 or more en energy storage which makes it ultimately way more useful obviously all that ex extra energy storage is very handy so uh, try and be nice with, to the miners and try and find some of these in their space stations it's pretty rare to find them uh, but you can you will eventually find them or get them in quest rewards uh, same with the legendary you can you can uh, get quest rewards and get legendary ones of these and the legendary coefficient on these faction based items is incredibly high that is 50 percent more basically so this miners guild at legendary this miners reactor would be 50% uh, better than what it is right now at legendary uh, versus the smaller increase you're going to get off the ion reactor right here it's not going to be 50% you get a bigger base and same thing with goes to Vengate large reactor now this one takes up 50% uh, more space but you get more than 50% more energy regeneration so for pure energy generation the Vengate reactors are going to be better there's smaller versions too uh, you have battery storage and so far the only best one here is going to be the Andorian ones and you have your battery size based on the size of your ship. Use the biggest that you can that your ship can handle for your battery power stuff. But the capital drive right here, there's two only two different kinds of, of, of drives right here. There's going to be the regular, uh, red the regular drives, the impulse drives, the MK up to four, and there's going to be the the, uh, the pirates version. Well, the syndicate they have an MK5 version you can find on these capital drives, which is going to be better. And there's the pirate version is going to be a little bit better, or it depends on your your point of view 
basically. The Pirate version of these drives has more uh, max speed on them, but less acceleration power. So it's a pretty big dip in the acceleration power and just a smaller dip increase in the max speed. But if you want the higher max speed, the extra 10 or so on the max speed can make a big difference uh, for your stuff. So you can try and get some Pirate uh, drops on your engines. And that's going to be uh, hard to do on, on your face first playthrough. You just got to get lucky and randomized. Um, everybody needs a warp drive. The bigger the warp drive, the more space you're going to get off of them. Pretty standard. And also the uh, smaller the warp drive, the less charge time it's going to take. So the time, the time it takes to recharge is going to be different for the different sizes of these things to you know power up type of a deal. And all your ships are pretty much going to want a speed booster. Uh, they, they don't have much of an effect on your ship. You got to stack them up. Uh, now we get in the things that you can stack besides the energy thing producers there. You can, of course, you can stack those. You're going to need speed boosters. And of course, I got three speed boosters here and the best ones that my ship can use. And it's 27%. So it's, it's okay. But uh, yeah, three boosters is pretty low on that. And then they take a lot of energy right here. So these guys here are sucking up like to a negative 243 energy per second when you're just moving with them on right now. So they take a lot. And of course, there's two different kinds. There's the regular speed boost here. This one takes four space up at 70. And the pirate version takes is a little bit less at 63, but it takes up one less space. Uh, stacking these together on test runs, uh, having three of these stacked, I mean, four of these stacked, no, yeah, three of these. Three of these stacked together to take 12 space and four of these ones stacked together. You have more speed power and less energy with the pirate heavy boosters right here. Well, maybe close to the same energy. But uh, anyways, you get more speed power by stacking four for space. So the pirate heavy boost are going to be better in the long run and the gyroscopes uh, that number is going to be capped so just take a just when you're building your ships take a good look at your your turning speed right here and if you're adding a gyroscope on there and this doesn't move at all you hit your cap so right now basically I don't think I need two of these ones right here to reach this cap I don't know what's causing it to cap out or whatever like that but for now uh, just realize that there is a cap on these gyroscopes and once you get to the MK4 values uh, you probably don't need two of them to actually cap up but you can maybe start using some just regular small ones to get some of the ability to cap up there and save some space for that kind of stuff uh, and of course you all the ships are gonna have some armor type of a deal on there there's many different kinds of armor but what you're looking for for smaller ships is high uh, damage resistance and hit points and that's gonna make you have a higher mass value but that higher mass value is gonna affect your acceleration but on the smaller ships it's not gonna matter your acceleration is pretty much gonna be close to your max speed or something like that it's gonna be just incredibly higher so you can go with the heavy armor like I have on this ship right here or or for the bigger ships like this, like class five or something like that, you're going to go with light armor. There's only really uh, like three choices for light armor, and that is the basic, um, the basic, uh, uh, what is it called? I tongue tied for how it's called. Lithium. What's the name of it? Um, let's see. There it is. Yeah, Lithium. I'm pretty much pretty much close to the name. I'm really bad at names. There's a Lithium light armor. It's the lightest and very low hit points, like no damage resistance for you at all. But the mass is really nice. That negative 45% right there. We take a look at the acceleration right now at 16.6. Uh, swap up the armors, get the last mass, and we have 35.1. So that's like double the acceleration right there. Didn't affect the max speed, but yeah, that lowered our mass and and really helped out our acceleration by a lot. So definitely wanted to try something like that. Uh, the other light armor is the Bengay light armor it has no mass on it on all so you're not going to be it just gives you more damage resistance in hit points basically but with no mass of the change right there but using that compared to that puts my acceleration down to 19 so uh yeah that's not much of a, uh, like a gain right there but the better best armor in the game for this for that combination is the human's armor the terran armor there and that gives you a big hit point boost almost a hop it's really high in damage resistance and it lowers your mass uh for right here if i was using that it's 23 so but i get the all that extra hit points built in with that versus this Ethereum right there. So this is like a lot more. This is another factor of hit points and damage resistance and a little bit less mass. So it all depends on what you're building, but that's how you do it. The other factors on the armor, the other option you can choose is the energy armor. And that takes the place of all your shield generators and your armor combined together. And it is, does times it by a 0.7 factor for the best one you can possibly get, basically versus the regular energy armor. And that, that, that value there will lower your hit points significantly. I can't say that word. 
Uh, sorry, but yeah, it gives you a huge shield power boost, 2600, way more than I have right now with all the effects on there. That would be a crazy amount. Uh, we can show you that in a second after we talk about uh, the other effect right there. Um, well, the, it gives you absorption and good shield regeneration, takes a lot of power to use it, blah, 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 a lot of space, and you can't use any generators. Uh, but uh, let's go over to the next thing you want to do with your ships is your shield charge, shield generation and shield management, that kind of stuff. So you got your, sh your shield damage right here for blocking, that's your absorb, and then you got your generation and your shield power right there. And of course this can be maxed out and this is a 50% value for 100% more energy usage. So that's what this means right here. So your energy value right here, that's your basic standard, what your shields are. You pump in 100% uh, more energy to use them and you get 50% more shields for this one here. And these values are all changed up for what you have on them. But also affects the, the uh, damage absorption right there. So that's really handy too. Uh, the last uh, question about shields is the effect the shields have in the game right now. Uh, the damage absorption and regeneration uh, both have a little hidden uh, fact unknown about them uh, is that uh, when you get hit by multiple attacks uh, a whole bunch of times type of deal uh, lots of fast attacks from different sources type of deal uh, it blocks your regeneration and stuff like that so if your shields run out uh, the next second that pops by you're not getting any shield of regeneration and the next second and the next second the long the more you're getting hit that your shield regeneration is not going to kick in the same thing happens with your block value right here so your absorption value right here and that is per second so once you're getting hit by uh, like you know five times a second or something like that uh, you're, and you're hit past your shield block your shield block is not going to be resetting so you're not going to be getting that block value for the next second so you block this much damage in the first second and then if you're getting hit too many times you're not going to that's is not going to be reset at all for your gameplay uh, that's the way I seems it feels like. I could be wrong with that. It could just keep restacking. Uh, but I've been doing the fight and getting hit by the same number of guys with the same number of weapons pretty steadily. And for the first while, these shields were going down at a certain rate. And then after the shield, the shield generation was going down a lot faster after that happened. So that's why why I'm that's why I'm saying that for you, just so you know that the block value you might get run into a situation where you get too many attacks at once and you're not getting your your damage absorption is not kicking in right now and same with the regeneration it's not going to kick in if your shields are empty but that being said your shield absorbers right here they take up three space and then it'll absorb 12 points of damage and then your shield chargers on the other hand uh, they're going to do regenerate eight per second and they take one space so that's uh, twice the effect if you times it by three basically so if you take up the same amount of space, you're going to get twice as much shield regeneration. And that regeneration is going to keep going until, well, as long as you have shields. So this one here is not going to get, you're not going to get locked down by multiple attacks with shield generation. So you might want to look into stacking a whole bunch of shield uh, regenerators, uh, shield chargers, uh, versus stacking absorption on your ships for those hectic combats. Because that shield regeneration is going to be twice as effective, uh, adding on to all your other buffs, obviously. So it's going to be even more effective. And that's going to keep on going as long as you're not getting hit. Other thing to note is when you're bubbled, your shields do not regenerate either. Neither does your hit points or stuff like that. So that's kind of weird how that works. But uh, uh, the bubble kind of stops that from actually taking effect too. But it helps to reset that cooldown that you, you currently are under by getting hit too many times. Uh, but let's carry on over to the shield generations. There's only two different kinds. The Venge have the best uh, on theirs. So they'll have better diminishing returns. It takes up one more space. But it has a built-in shield absorber. And even having some shield absorption is still better. It's still good uh, so yeah these things are way better for space if you're using them for shield power and generation and all that kind of stuff they're just way better to use than the regular heavy shield generators that you can get and the uh, you know the chargers right there now going on with the chargers right there they only take one space for the mk3 which is cur currently the best uh, eight a second and the venge charger you can find is 15 a second but takes up double the space and uh, but you get that energy storage right there so 87 energy storage is pretty nice it takes up uh you know the twice the space though so if you're looking for pure absorption you can save one point for per two spaces type of deal or energy power so yeah go with the venge charger get that extra energy storage it's never going to hurt to have a little bit more storage kicking around for some stuff and you'd lose like a whole one point out of uh, 15 type of a deal for charging needs uh then we go on you're gonna ship is gonna need a scanner the scanner is going to be this radius right here different whole bunch of different scanners the syndicate have a special scanner for themselves so it's going to get better as you upgrade but uh it has three different effects on it and so do all the scanners so they're going to be better at certain things uh but the you know the sensor power is for outside and the loot detection range doesn't really matter that much it stacks up with the other different things like uh, the loot finder over here it stacks up there so you don't have to worry about that as much it's just you know the scanning power inside here so if you upgrade it and this goes bigger 
bigger and then it goes up again like so and the other ones are going to be about this one so you're going to get about as big as this for the other ones for like the basic one the basic scanner only takes up one space and you're looking at something like this at a legendary level that's what I can compare it to. I got, a little, I got a legendary one, and it's about this much space to see with for one space, but uh, with this, this scanner here, uh, this goes up by quite a bit when you go up to the epic uh, version. And of course, if you actually get a legendary one, it'd, be, uh, it'd probably be crazy good. And of course, there's sensor amplifiers. You can stack those if you want. That just increase your sensor power on the outside to see what you have. It's not incredibly important. And the other thing you're gonna want on your ships is a battle computer or a tauna computer, which is the next upgrade, which is like a, a, a big, like 50% better, basically. So the Optronic computer is going to be 50% better, and then all these other things are going to be taking effect as it is. The other thing you're going to want to worry about in this game is flux. It's pretty easy to manage. Uh, flux is, can be derivative by a warp diverter, which will drain your warp charge. So small, smaller the warp drive, the better it is to use a warp diverter. And if you have a big warp drive, you know, five or more, basically, or for, for space, maybe four or more. Uh, it depends. It's around there. But if it, for the bigger the space, you're going to want to use the other one, which is the, um, what's it called? for the flux accumulator, the flux capacitor. You wanna, you're gonna use a flux capacitor. It uh, generates flux uh, like in like three times uh, slower than this one right here, uh, and but it's free. It just generates it automatically. You don't have to do anything uh, for it. So it's just automatically in the background, no space. And to actually have more storage, you need this accumulator. It just takes an extra storage for some of the things that are gonna need it. Uh, for if you're using weapons that use this, uh, which use this, you're gonna wanna have one. If you don't, you don't need one. It's only gonna be used on, for, as a, as a standard effect on some of the ships is going to have like you know 25% more crit or speed and something like that if they have flux available uh, out there but it's not going to use it up it's just going to be sitting there and using it to actually use the flux up you're going to have one put shields on all your ships you can only have one on your ship and this will use a flux charge up and then it has its own cooldown and absorption rate and the best one I found is the improved energy barrier there's the uh there's a there is a pirate version of this that has is like basically the same thing, but it takes up double the space. It has impact absorption and uh, and damage and stuff like that added onto. That's not a big factor in this game. The only thing you want to worry about is its actual duration and how much it absorbs in its cooldown. So the other one there, the Andorian one, it's double the duration but half the damage absorption. And in this game there is going to be ships with uh, big huge weapons that do a big short blast of damage that will go off for like, you know, a couple seconds and do a, do like 10,000 damage to you. So yeah, uh, if, if you time it right, this one here is way better at absorbing the damage because you can... Uh, have, uh, virtually survive a hit basically versus not surviving at all uh, and you can get you don't want to get one shot so uh, definitely have one of these things on there uh, the collection beam on there the, the miners have the best one that there it's like you know 30% uh, better than the regular collection beam and these are the standard things you're going to want to put on your ship uh, of course you might want to have the energy the regenerating thing on there but that takes more power too it takes a lot of power to regenerate your hit points but it's also very handy to have and they're they're nice right there there's improved regeneration and kind of the thing uh, that's self-explanatory uh, the other things you might want to know about in this game is the capacitors they're pretty much garbage they use energy cells just to charge recharge your energy value right here uh, you, I'm never running out of energy because you all you always need more production than what you have so you worry about the production value not your storage value for doing your, your your weapons and stuff like that so the capacitors become basically useless I just want to show you there the hyper cooling can be awesome if you really want to min and maximize stuff because it doubles your cooling system so your cooling system number down here is how much you know how much heat your weapons can stand so withstand before they uh, you know burn out type of deal so you can overclock your weapons or build you know weapons that are twice as strong for the cooling uh, stuff like that and then just pop one of those hyper cooling so that is something you might want to do with the big ships that have those big guns I was talking about to do all that damage you might want to stick a hyper cooler in there and then uh, build your weapons for double or whatever your cooling is on that weapon and then you can just pop that and you'll be able to do your best uh, damage uh, that way as long as you have some stupid uh, nitro li liquid nitrogen on your ship, but uh, that's more complicated stuff. Uh, you're gonna want, probably want a tractor beam on your main ship, and to go with the tractor beam is the heavy warp torch. I mean, not, not just any 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 type of uh, warp torch array, basically. And uh, the, both of them use the same type of uh, power right there, and you can see that 322. And that power in this game for both of them is based on the ship's uh, 
a space that they use up. Uh, what's it called? It's called Space Occupied in this game. So a big heavy ship like this one here is 800 Space Occupied. That is the power you have to use to store it. That is how much space they take in your inventory. That is the towing capacity and your tractor beam uh, farrier. So that whole tractor beam right there of uh, 32 is you're not going to have any con much control over these bigger ships moving them around but you still will have control and all you need is just one small one that's all you need in a, in a warp storage array to be able to warp stuff around but you need to stack some of these up together to be able to be able to get up to that 800 value to actually move something as big as one of those ships um this is an old ship and that's why i have some of this crap on here to uh, show you with it and then here we go to other basic things uh, the other thing though is heat sinks can be very handy on your ship to do the weapon cooling if you're going to build it uh the pirate heat sink is pretty much is, uh, like eight percent better for the same space so yeah try and find a uh, pirate heat sink so you can uh, start building some of those for yourselves on the ship so that covers all of the uh, standard items in this game so some of the, un the some of the unconventional items you can find are the warp mods and uh things like that so just be aware that there are other items in this game i do believe there's a healing item too um but let's check out yeah, yeah let's show you those things first so let's show you what the one mean by the warp mod it acts like a damage boost well not the warp mod but the other one does but well, the warp mod right here this goes up to negative 97 percent at epic value and this is negative 40 percent for your warp distance when it's upgraded and that is incredibly handy obviously for warping around you don't need a big huge energy energy supply anymore you just need to have extra warp distance on your uh you know your your navigators and stuff like that just add that in there and then you'll just be able you'll be able to match your warp distance and it'll be virtually free and make your life a whole lot easier than worrying about adding batteries and stuff to improve your energy and the combat mod is the other one i've found so far and this one here at, at epic value is going to be the six percent and sixteen percent for that hundred percent boost right there so you can find this gun a lot of those combat mod and it takes up two space there and it will act as a weapon cooling system and damage bonus thing so you're pretty much going to probably just use these things here instead of having uh, heat sinks because, you know, it's like you're going to get the damage bonus out of it instead. So it's probably better to stack these guys in there and worry about your heat that way and get the damage with it. You know, two for one type of deal. So it's still going to be half your, your cooling uh, altogether for space. The other thing in this game is uh, stealth. And the Terrans have the best stealth uh, ships in this game. They get double the energy generation when you're done. So this 10% uh, would be 20% type of the thing, uh, down to 20%. So yeah, you need a lot of energy. <laughs> like a, this one here um, without being upgraded is 1,700 energy. Yeah, so you're gonna wanna get the Terran one versus the regular standard ones because they're they're gonna be better at it and they're gonna have a higher coefficient on legendary type of a deal. And, then, and if you wanna stay stealth, you're gonna wanna have a lot of energy production going on to actually manage that. Um, I, I think that covers everything uh, on this thing, except for the, uh, I didn't show you what the energy generation thing will look like, um, but I don't think we need to see that. The only other thing here you have to worry about is uh, uh, non-combat or low combat type of things, which is the attack drones. Don't worry about them. Uh, they, they might be useful at the start of the game, but you need a whole bunch of parts to use them. So at the start of the game, filling up your inventory space with uh, drone parts, and it kind of becomes a pain in the butt, and then it'll get killed by point defense systems. Uh, even 10 of these right now wouldn't uh, don't do anything very much but you can use them while you're stealth just so you know so if you're stealth you can use these and you won't break stealth uh, but if stealth is bugged and the enemies will take pot shots at you even though they can't see you they'll randomly turn around and shoot at you and hit you type of a deal without looking <laughs> but you know they don't target you they'll just turn and fire and then you'll say hey what the hell why did i get hit and then um, while you're stealth missiles will still track you so that you still keep track missile tracking on you that's kind of weird how that works and the mining drone bays like you can get the heavy one from the from the miners and that's the best one to use if you're going to find uh, farm asteroid fields uh, stacking a whole bunch of these guys in there is going to be incredibly effective if you want to take it the lazy route and stuff like that instead of trying to target all those little missiles because the, the com computer gunners they don't target meteors you got to try and find them yourself there's no automatic targeting system on there so mining drone bays is going to save you the headache right there and they can be really really handy basically overall basically and of course there's the repair drone base you know they repair your ship obviously and then the next thing you might want to know is the um about the thing is the, re is the refinery base right here. So there's going to be a geology range on there and 58 is what you're looking for. So the only ones that are going to cover, cover that 58 is going to be the miners PCM one or it's going to be the Andorian model right there. So you can go with the Andorian model at that low value until you can find the PCM and get like, you know, twice as much refining rate for the same thing at 48. The advanced one, it doesn't cut it and the, and the turbo flux will only use your flux and do 10 at a time, but you're not getting that, that the magic number of 
48 to refine the best metals if you're looking to get the best results out of your refining stuff but in the end it probably doesn't even matter very much you're going to get all the stuff you need from just mining itself before, without worrying about the stuff right here it all depends but anyways let's take a look at what that armor does on here so i'm gonna have to take away these shield generators because you can't equip it with shield generators on so we can take a look at that heavy all right those are my shields are all gone and where is that heavy shield all right, there's the heavy energy armor right there oh still got i gotta take it off manually kind of sucks so where is that armor I have? Terran armor, right there it is. There, now can I equip it? There you go. Now that it's equipped, we can see our shields are jumped up incredibly high. Our hit points are really, really low. Yeah, that you can. There's and there's a weapons in this game that bypass shields, obviously, so you can take directly direct hit point damage, which will pretty much kill you right away. And that's what you're going to run into that kind of stuff a lot. Uh, but yeah, this uh, nice thing takes place. You can't stack any more regeneration, but you can stack absorption and chargers on there. So there's nothing stopping you from you know, putting up your absorb absorption in your regeneration rate uh, while you have this active it takes 10 space uses a lot of power uh, but you know it might be worth it to you depending on how you play and the other thing in here is re uh, hull reinforcements so this should add on exactly 510 so that should say 1300 and yeah there it is you get the 1300 mark right there so yeah, using these hull reinforcements, they are not affected by the armor's multiplication value right there. So that 0 0.07, they aren't affected by it, or the positive effect of the times three from the other ones, making it uh, these things pretty much useless to use on ships that have a high uh, modifier. So if you're looking at a times three modifier and you stick something like this on there, you have 10,000 hit points on your ship, you stick another 500 on there, you're just gonna get that 500. Like, who cares? I don't. I don't care. Uh, about 500 at that point. It's not going to be effective for five space. It's uh, pretty big. But on a smaller ship like this, uh, where is that? I don't have any more legendary ones. But yeah, I can stick another one. Without legendary, it's only 375. But when you're down the hit points, you can make up for it by sticking some of these things on there to... Uh, help negate that factor and then with the hit point regeneration thing on there um you'll be able to regenerate uh, your hit points at a higher percentage value since it goes off by percentage for a second automated repair system improved repair system yeah improved is better than the legendary one yeah so this yeah they take up eight space so they're they're space intensive but they do keep your generation going and you can turn them on and off and the on and off effects are the numbers right here and you just you know click on them and change the keys type of thing they're all set right there right now because i haven't changed anything on them but yeah just set up the way the keys do way you want them and you're good to go so i hopefully this explains everything you need to know about the equipment and what all these things are going to do for uh for finding the rare ones and what the factions are going to have uh, based on there you get just the major factions in there and what their special effects are and they have a better that better coefficient as they get upgraded so thanks for watching and if you need more information uh, take a look at my other videos and i'll see you next time